schedule. Uh, Dr. Walsh is going to be the first speaker because he has to head out uh, to the Children's Hospital soon. So, Kevin, please go ahead. This mic is not on. Mike is Mike is not on. And turn the music off, please. Uh, yep, that's on. Thank you. And could I just have the can we have the slides, please? Yeah, just yeah, just the yeah, just to project. Great, thanks. And I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Tin and the organisers for the very kind invitation. And also, thanks um, to being allowed to go first so I can head off to the Children's Hospital. Great, thank you. So, my, my, uh, my favorite device. So, the Saraflex is an evolution. It started, obviously, as HeartR, became Sarah, and then became uh, Saraflex. And the difference with Saraflex, the flex in it, is the actual string that attaches the... Um, device to the delivery cable. The, uh, in terms of what you get in the box, it's, it's, it's there for, it's already on the, on the cable and you've got the um, loading mechanism, but you have this handle which has a, a, red, you know, a red button to allow you to engage the release mechanism. And this is the way the release, mer the, the way the release system works. You can see as you pull back on this handle, this sort of mandrel comes back, releases the hook, the loop in the string, and then allows the loop to come out of the device. That's the profile of it compared to Amplatzer. It's probably it's probably a bit lower profile, and you can see there's no hub or post on the left atrial side. Um, flexibility and stability, these are sort of animations. And you can see it's quite stable and there's a lot of flexibility in terms of that you really can genuinely assess what the post-release position is going to be like prior to release. In terms of the sizes that are available, it's available from 6 to 32 millimeters. You don't have it in the bigger sizes in terms of 36, 40, 42. You'd have to go back to Sarah for those. Um, it also comes in a multi-fenestrated version, which is actually more important because it's often in these multi-fenestrated aneurysms that you want to as get an off-tension release, um, pre-release assessment. And an example of the animation compared to the previous device, and I think we're all familiar with this with the Amplat, so it works very well, but there's always certi certainly a leap of faith prior to release that it's going to look okay. So in terms of uh, publications or support for it, this is a multi-center Turkish study, 125 patients, 58 Seraflex, um, 67 um, Amplatzer, similar patient characteristics. Um, it worked well in both groups, um, and the only difference was one transient left atrial hub thrombus in the Amplatzer group. Um, so the flexibility during implantation, do we need it? Um, Felix Berger kindly helped me um, with the talk. He gave me some of these illustrations, and these are examples, 10-year-old um, secundum ASD, and if you know, the, if you know uh, Felix and his group, they do these on transesophageal um, without any uh, fluoro, by and large. They do them completely echo-guided. Um, so this is a 12 millimeter Amplat susceptible occluder. It's checking the device position prior to release. So we're pretty much all familiar with this. And we can see the change in angulation from, you can see it beforehand, and you can see what it's like afterwards on these frames. And the final result, of course, is, is very good. Another case, um, small secundum ASD, small aortic ring, rim, small superior rim, um, balloon sizing, um, 11 millimeter stop flow, um, 12 millimeter amplat susceptible occluder, um, really didn't align, didn't align properly, kept coming through. We're all familiar with this buttonholing approach. And third attempt, still, um, still not really um, settling. And you know, and, and you know uh, Felix is having a problem if he's thinking about these things. And even at this point, he thought maybe he would use radiation to see would that help um, close it. <laughs> so um, they 
you put a 12 millimeter Seraflex, this is how it's settled, looks nice and flat and released, um, with just one attempt with that. So that was an interesting compar all the comparison, although case by case, and that's after the release. And you can see, you can see it doesn't really change position during the release at all before and post. And this case, which was difficult for them, had 1.2 minutes of fluoro, but so they only use a fluoroscopy in the, if they really need to. So another case, 26 year old, 56 kilos, 3D reconstruction, reasonable defect, um, 26 to 27 millimeter on sizing, so a 20 millimeter Seraflex um, released. You can see the position, looks nice, nice configuration around the aortic root, and this is what it looks like in 3D. 50-year-old, uh, 16 millimeter defect, balloon sizing, stop flow, 21 millimeters. Device opens nicely, 22 millimeter Seraflex, and a good position, nice and flat. And that's at release with very little change in position. So the German Heart Center was experienced as 14 patients, and these were the range of devices they used. Um, in terms of cases that we've done, my colleague Paula Slieslock put together our cases last year. I think we did a bit more since then, but there's another little follow-on story. With 78 patients, um, up to 18 years, um, wide range of um, weights, more females, mostly secundum ASDs, because it's a children's hospital, device size versus weight, um, TOE size, balloon sizing on most of them, um, one embolization, um, and small residual ASD in three patients, but we are happy with that. I, with this device, if you do get a migration, you need to have this um, toothed um, biopsy forceps. It's, it actually has hooked teeth called a Maslanka forceps to be able to catch, you know, to be able to catch one of the ends, depending on the way the device is facing. So, but what did happen with the Seraflex occluders is they were pulled off the market because of this tulip malformation. Um, I think this was Medtronic's decision. They're now back on the market um, and we're just waiting for resupply of them. So to conclude, um, early experience with Seraflex, very promising, high occlusion rate, flat configuration, good and flexible implantation characteristics, the position doesn't change after release, huge advantage in deficient aortic rim and has a slight disadvantage with a larger sheath. Um, we have no long-term results, and there's always concern about erosion endothelialization. Thank you very much. Thank you.